Hey folks, welcome back into Frank's Bar and Lounge. I'm your host, Dick Jones. Uh, Lars is getting married in Alaska, so he's going to be gone for two weeks, so I'm going to be filming this myself. Uh, forgive the crappy camera work. Um, <laughs> kind of sucks when you're by yourself, but anyway, we're going to make it work. First off, I want to say that my last video, the Oleosacrum Old Fashioned, we have 103 views. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched that video. I really, really, really appreciate it. It's, it's people like you is why I do this because I, I want to bring good entertainment to you. I want to have fun. I want to act silly and maybe make you laugh. And at the same time, maybe give you drinks and recipes for drinks that you can share with your friends and which will lead to more good times. So from the bottom of Dick's heart, I want to say thank you. And if you're so inclined, hang around on this channel. We're going to be trying to bring in more funny stuff. Uh, we're going to be changing it up. Uh, we'll be doing more grill work outside kind of stuff. I have an episode planned coming up where we're going to do appetizers with bourbon. And I'm going to have probably six or seven different appetizers from steak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, goodness gracious. I sound like I'm 17 again. Or 16. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Uh, steak and grilled oysters and cheeses and all kinds of other great appetizers uh, that'll help you throw a good bourbon tasting party and have some serious eats so you'll be eating large with the big boys or girls whichever the case may be all right so the first thing that I'm gonna do uh, on this show we're gonna keep it kind of simple I'm not gonna make any drinks I'm just gonna review some bourbons uh, some of the most basic bourbons that you can have in your bar now I know that a lot of people uh, they go into a liquor store and they see the huge rack of bourbon, all the shelves from the bottom shelf, the cheapest, to the top shelf, uh, which is where the term bottom shelf whiskey came from, and they don't know which ones to get. Well, I'm going to show you entry-level bourbons, and some of these can be what we call a daily drinker. It's what you want to throw a couple of fingers of it in a glass with a couple of ice cubes, or you want to drink it neat, which is without ice. You can do that, and these are fantastic and we're going to go over and they're very affordable some of them are incredibly affordable under 22 dollars so that's pretty good when you want to have just a basic lineup that is sure to impress so let's get to it now uh if, if you've watched any of my previous videos you know i'm a fan of old forester okay old forester has really made a comeback right about 2010 i believe uh they changed the game they uh they have sold me on it. Matter of fact, uh, one of the, my other guys that I watch regularly, uh, they said that if you like one Old Forester, you're going to like all of them, and they're not kidding. And I have five bottles of Old Forester, and I've got three or four more to go until I have the whole lineup. And every single one of them is just fantastic. So we're going to start at the top. And, oh, by the way, in this episode... We're gonna try a brand new bourbon that I just picked this up yesterday at Costco. It is through uh, Barton Distillery, and it's a single, or excuse me, small batch Kentucky straight bourbon. Uh, how much this comes in? What's the horsepower on this sucker? 92 horsepower, not too bad, $19. And they're supposed to have three in the line. They have a rye whiskey and then a single barrel, which uh, my Costco didn't carry them or I would have picked them up. but. This we're gonna taste today, give it a quick run through and see how it holds up. So anyway, let's set that aside just for now. Okay, the first one right up, Old Forester Classic. This is what I call my daily drinker, folks. This runs about $22 and this is fantastic. Now this is a different type of bourbon. Now what you wanna do with different bourbons when you line them up like this, you wanna get the nose on it, you want to experiment with the taste and you want to get those flavors coming through yeah sure you're going to get some alcohol but this is 86 proof it's not bad it's not going to burn you up like what we're going to try later on with 115 proof of the 1920 but these higher proofs will really surprise you i mean but anyway so for an entry level bourbon at 22 dollars old forester 86 classic is not a bad choice so I got my Glencairn glass here and I'm gonna roll it around like that and let it aerate and uh, get that whiskey up on the side of it and look at those tears. And then you can put your nose in it. 
Mm, first thing right off the bat, bananas. I, I can smell bananas right up front. Hit you right in the nose. Mmm, like maple syrup. That's one of the more prevalent uh, noses that you get on some bourbons is maple syrup. There's the tears. Oh my goodness. I wish you guys could look look how it runs down, down, down the glass there. That is really slick. I, I don't know if you can see it. But man, oh man, this is awesome. Let's give it a taste. Now, this is my daily drinker. I'll put a couple of fingers of this on some rocks glasses after a hard day at work, which is pretty much every day. Mmm. Mmm. Let me try that again. What am I getting there? Man, muted cinnamon. Definitely the bananas. Warm, rich. Oh, it's almost like French toast. Really, really good. Let that let that alcohol burn go off. Get that chew. Mmm. Lingers in the mouth. Oh my goodness, what a nice, nice drink. Mm. For 86 proof, it's really great. It's a brown form in line. All of Old Forester is distilled on site on Whiskey Row in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, they're owned by Brown Foreman. They uh, started in 1870 uh, by George Brown. And they are the oldest continuous distillery in the United States. They've been going for over 150 years. They even were still distilling and making bourbon during Prohibition because they were able to sell the, the whiskey as medicinal purposes. But, yep, they have never shut down. And uh, like I said earlier, just a few years ago, they had a turnaround. And, uh, mm. man, that is not bad at all. Uh, master distiller Chris Norris uh whatever he did boy he did it right mm, he did it really right but anyway 22 dollars a bottle for a regular bottle i got this one on sale for like 41 or something like that which is still a really good bath so this is a regular bottle a regular 750 milliliters so you can see you know this right here i bought it in bulk and i've gone through this much already and i don't use this for cocktails this is my daily sipper so if you want a good, decent, entry-level bourbon, if you ever came over to Frank's Bar and Lounge, this is what I'd pour for you. This is one of my impress the guests. It blows them away when they find out it's only 22 bucks. You can't beat that. So let's set this over here. Get a fresh glass from over here. And the next up that we're going to do is the Old Forester 1910. Now the classic was 86 proof. This is 93 horsepower. Okay. Uh, this will run you right about 25, maybe a little more. Per, no, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This is a little more expensive, and so is the 1920. The 1910 and the 1920, uh, I just wanted them. Now, these were not what I would do for daily sippers. These are for guests. But if you want a decent back bar, look at getting this. This is about $65 a bottle, okay? A little more pricey. That's right up there with Angel's Envy, which is an MGP. Like I said prior, I'm not a fan of MGPs, but Angel's Envy is the exception to that. And meaning that the people who finish Angel's Envy, which let me show you what that bottle looks like, because I have not have one. It's right here. This is Angel's Envy, and it's finished in port wine casks. And MGP is Midwest Grain Producers, uh, or Midwest Grain, MG, yeah, Grain Producers, and... Uh, they're based out of the old Seagram 7 distillery in Indiana, and they make the whiskey, but the people who own Angel's Envy buy it by the truckload and finish it themselves. So, And you can always tell on a bottle, if it doesn't say distilled in, it's not distilled, not by them anyway. So anyway, they buy it from MGP, and they finish it in casks, made or which uh, had port wine in it, and it is phenomenal, folks. Oh, let's get back over here. So we're going to do the 93 horsepower. I hear it's old fine whiskey. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there and I do an easy pour because Dick's got to work in the morning. So let's go ahead and you know, I'm gonna bring the 86 back and we're gonna smell both. So here's the 1910, not bad. Mmm, smells richer, a lot more rich than, than this. And let's see what the color looks like. Yeah, the color's kind of about the same, a little more darker. Little, little more dark here, but let's see here. Let's get those tears going on this. 
on this right here and bring it up. Anyway, uh, I'm a big fan of Old For Old Forester. They really won me over. That and early times. We're going to get to that here in just a second. Mm. You know the surprising thing about that? It's higher proof. It's 93. And it is smooth. It is smooth like you are drinking Aunt Jemima syrup. It's not as sweet as, but it is a smooth smooth drink so if you don't mind dropping about 65 a bottle for this by all means you cannot go wrong with this i would definitely introduce your friends to this like if you get a a friend over that they're like well i really don't know about bourbons i really don't think i like them introduce them to this this will get them mm. what a difference oh my god you can even smell it mm. oh man Man, you can't go wrong with that. Okay, let's compare this with the 1920. 115 proof sports fans. So we're going from 93 to 115. Equal in quality. It's very, very true. If you like any old Forester, you're gonna like them all. Those guys were right. This pops you right about 60 to 65 a bottle, but it is worth every penny of it. I'm just gonna put just a little bit because I don't want this to I don't want to overpour myself. Ugh. Why did I grunt like that? It sounded like I'm having sex. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> so here's the 1920. I'm going to compare it to the 1910. Get it right up in there. And what you're doing is you're aerating it, folks. Just like when you do with wine. It's the same properties. Mm -hmm. Smells very similar. Okay, let's give this a test. So the 1920, 115 horsepower. Man, look at those tears. Man, you can definitely tell it's got more kick on hand. Man, oh man, oh man. You know what I would do with this? I would let it settle in just a little bit. That's not too bad. Mmm, there it is. Wow. <clears throat> That's an aftertaste. Let me clean my palate and try some. Let me uh, wash my palate out. I want to try this again. My goodness, what happened is the first thing that hit me was it's 115 proof. There's no ice in it. <coughs> Excuse me, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open it up with a drop of water. That always works. So I know what it tastes like. Anyway, what I was saying is the first thing that hit me was the sheer level of alcohol. 115. But then after that burned off, you saw me have my mouth open and I breathed out. I let the alcohol burn out. That banana flavor come up off the end and just got you from the back of the palate, right on the finish. So anyway, let's go ahead and put a drop of water in this. And you know what? I'm going to take the 1910 and I'm going to put a drop of water in that. Now a drop of water, just if you've never done it, when you have a bourbon, try it just a little bit like this. Try it straight. And then after you try it, put a drop of water in it. Try it again totally different it opens it up like a flower in ways you just cannot believe it just becomes so good scotch is the same way and i love scotch we haven't talked about scotches yet i have about three different types four different types of scotch up there but anyway oh it even smells different oh my goodness the 1910 mmm pancakes cinnamon mmm very nice. Let's let's give the 120 a shot. Or the 1920, sorry. That is smooth. That just two little drops of water. Wow. Man, oh man. Let me uh let me clean my palate here. I'm gonna do the 1910 like this. Ooh, wow, that is incredibly good. Oh my God, the 93 proof, definitely great. If you got newbies to the uh, bourbon world, I would start them on the 86 and the 93 first. Don't go for the high powered because you don't want to kill them out of it. And you know, like you don't want to kill their enthusiasm for it. Go with these and ease them into it. You can't go wrong. So we're burning time. Let's go over here. Let me put this here. Plus another thing that I like to do is the morning after, what you do is when you finish these glasses, don't rinse them. 
leave them on the counter. And then when you get up in the morning, the first thing you do, stick your nose in it. You're gonna be amazed. Do that with any good bourbon and you will not be disappointed. All right, now the next up is 100 horsepower, orange stripe. Old Forester, of course. I picked this up just two days ago. It was on sale, it was about $25. Once again, a great entry level bourbon, but it does not drink like that. It is unbelievable. All the Old Foresters are that way. They're entry level, but they don't taste like it. Oh my God. I mean, in my opinion, the 1910 is equal to Michter's. And I like Michter's. And if you know what that is, mm, okay, very subdued on the smell middle of the road actually let's go ahead and pour a little in here okay whoops i swear baby i've never dribbled before all right not too bad 25 bucks 20 to 25 bucks depending if you can get it on sale let's get this up in here let's get this going where's the tears at oh goodness for the gods <laughs> Hey, if I had a nickel for every time I spilled bourbon in Frank Place. Mm. Man, right off the Wow. Holy crap, that is good. I didn't even put water in that yet. Very comparable to this. First thing that you get are the bananas. Mmm, interlaced with that delicious French toast. Mmm. Mmm. Got a little edge of cinnamon on it. Oh, that is not bad. Where's my water? Let's open this sucker up. My God, that's good. Mmm. That's the first time that I've I've tried that. And I'm not disappointed. So let's clean my palate. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to try this with like, like blue cheese. And that's coming up in that episode that I told you about, folks. So let's give this a shot now that I put the water in it and it opened it up. Oh my Lord. Oh, that is smooth. You would think a hundred proof, which is kind of like the bottled and bonds. Remember I said earlier, if you watched the other videos, hundred proof, man, that that's deceiving. That is not, that doesn't taste like a hundred proof to me. Oh, that is nice. Mm. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to, a real quick thing about which one do I like best. All right, next up on the basic beginner entry level bourbons, which you can't go wrong with. So what we have so far is the Old Forester 96, or excuse me, 86, which is about 20, 21, $22 a bottle. You wanna, my goodness, the 100 proof. Woo, really good. It It's a great progress. And here's the funny thing, the 93 was a little more harsher than the 100. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's the mash bill. But Hokey Smokes Bullwinkle, that is good. All right, Early Times. Early Times used to be owned by Brown Foreman, but they were sold to Sazerac. Sazerac uh, is a big time world uh, liquor producer, spirits, fine spirits, what they say. Uh, Fireball, Finlandia, uh, Buffalo Trace, which I happen to have a bottle of Buffalo Trace back here. Uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor. I, I can't, I mean, they own a lot of spirits. 1792, I, I know they own that. But anyway, uh, Brown Foreman sold early times. No, it's a bottled and bond, 100 proof. Remember what we said, it's gotta be bottled in the same season, in the same batch. Uh, it's under government supervision. This drinks like a $60 bottle of bourbon, but this runs you right about $23 if you get it on sale maybe 24 without being on sale. I haven't seen it above $23, to be honest, down at a couple of liquor stores that I go to. But this is unfricking believable, folks. If, I mean, it's, you know what? I'm not gonna do a tasting because I've already done a tasting, as you can see, uh, but I will give it a smell. Now, it's a screw top. I swear to you, folks, don't let this fool you. This thing is phenomenally good. It really is. It, it oh my God, it smells like candy. Mmm, what is that smell? Like cherries almost. Mmm. Uh, I would definitely, if you want to impress your guest, pour them this. And you can mix this with drinks, but I wouldn't mix this one. I'd drink it straight on the rocks or neat. 
but I'm a rocks guy, so that's, that's what I would do. All right, so we finished with that. Let's try this, and then I'm gonna let you folks go. Now, I still got the seal on it, so let me dig down here under the bar in Dick's knife collection, and let me see if this has got a, no, it doesn't. You know, I'm just gonna cut it. Let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Oh my goodness, small batch. My batch is small, baby. Ooh, a wooden top cork. Very nice. I'm gonna let's put this away before somebody hurts themselves. Not that anybody ever comes down here. So let's get a new Glencairn. And if you're gonna do bourbon tastings, folks, uh, get a Glencairn glass. You, you can't go wrong with these. They're a little pricey, but if even if you get just two of them, they're going to run you about $20, maybe $20, $22, something like that for, for two. Uh, they're made of crystal, and they really do. Look at that. You can just roll it right there on the bar. Let the bourbon aerate. It's a really great investment. So Now, this is the old Barton single batch, Costco, $19. And it, that's its regular price. And I'm really looking forward to getting the other two. All right, so we got enough in there, so let's go over here. Let's go over here. And let's give it a try. So, 92 proof. Hmm. Yeah, and from what I had read, Barton, or excuse me, a Costco had got together with Barton Distillers and decided that they're going to try to introduce like a new type of bourbon because their Tennessee bourbon sucks. I got a bottle of it over there. I'm saving it in case I get a boat and I need to strip the paint off of it. But... Okay, first thing right off the bat, very sweet, very mapley, some candy smell there. Hmm, it's got rich. I got, I got to let the uh, let the ethanol kind of burn off here. But you know what? Let's give it a sip. Then we'll hit it with the water. Oh, oh, hmm. Oh, that's good. Holy crap. Let me let me put some water in that. But a little alcohol in the end. Hang on. Oh, this is good. This is gonna be good. Oh, I'm I'm excited about this. I'm surprised. Wow. I am surprised. This is good. Mmm. This may become one of my, oh, I got it on my nose. This may become one of my, my daily sippers. Let's see. Oh, no alcohol taste really. Just a couple drops of water, just boom. Oh my goodness. You know what? This is honestly hand of God. The first time I've opened this, I've never tried it before. I've just read about it. Uh, that's all, that's what bourbon is about. You just gotta try it. I like this. Holy crap, when I'm done with this episode, uh, as I edit it and put all the graphics up there and act all silly and everything, uh, man, I'm gonna pour me a glass of this. Ho, ho, ho. Awesome. But anyway, folks, for your entry level, I mean, 19 bucks at Costco. If you're not a member of Costco, I'd recommend becoming a member. But uh, if you're not, and you're not interested in it, get with a friend. Get, get with a friend to take you by Costco and go in with them and pick up a couple bottles that way. But anyway, here are four bourbons right here that will not break the bank. They're great entry level bourbons that they don't drink. Man, this one especially, wow. I am just, I am I am impressed as hell with this thing. This is phenomenal. But anyway, uh, yeah, they won't break the bank and they do not taste like entry level. So there you go, folks. Under $30, you could say. Matter of fact, even under $25 for each bottle. So this would be a great uh, a, a great range of proofs from 86 to 100 to 100 to 93 or 92. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend them. So this way you can impress your friends and when they come over, don't even tell them what it is. Just, you know, if they want to get into bourbon, give it a shot. Light up a cigar, too, if you're so inclined. Dick doesn't smoke, but if he did, he'd have a nice cigar, and which would compliment these nicely. But anyway, again, folks, thanks for watching. I really mean that. Uh, your views really mean a lot to me. I, I'm doing this for fun, and I really enjoy trying to get out there and share with you and just have some laughs and act goofy along the way. Uh, 
But if you, oh, one more thing, one more thing, folks. Uh, now that the quarantine is over, Dick Jones, the quarantine bartender, is going to have a name change coming up. And I was thinking about it, what name I could use. And then I thought, well, I've got 103 viewers, so I'm going to leave it up to you. So we're going to have a kind of an open suggestion contest. Put them in the comment section below. What name do you think would be good for this channel? It, it has to be Dick Jones and then something. So if you got any ideas, let's see them. I'll put them on a big board with your name by it, first name only. And uh, we'll go about and we'll just see which one is the most popular. See if I like them. We'll put them around with some friends. We'll see what Lars thinks when he gets back from his honeymoon. And uh, we will go from there. But anyway... This is another episode of Dick Jones, the Quarantine Bartender. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Smash that like button. Tell your friends. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's get this out here, and we'll have some fun. Until next time, do like Dick does. <laughs> Drink. <laughs>